23 Oracle decks for 2023. I got you. And we're going to dive into all of them for your sign. So stay tuned. So we look at Oracle decks as metaphors. These are always energetic possibilities. And since we're doing it for a year ahead reading, that is our time frame of when these energies might be a poppin' in your life. I'll have links to all the decks in the description of the video in case you want to check them out for yourself. And if you find this content valuable, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly also sharing it with those who may be interested in it. It would really help out the channel. And hey, you'd be helping out a friend, giving them the heads up of the energies for their year ahead. All right, let's get into your reading. Aries, let's dive into your 2023 year ahead oracle reading. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. We're going to start with this crystal oracle deck. It's great to have a crystal theme for your year ahead, so you might want to get this crystal for yourself. I'm not going to clarify every single deck that I pull from with tarot, but I will be clarifying some of them, and um, I will just let my intuition guide me in terms of which ones I end up clarifying. All right, Aries, 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 Aries. What do we need to know for you? The crystal for you, Aries, is number 12, turquoise, earth element and perseverance. Wow. Okay. And interesting because turquoise is often associated also with uh, Sagittarian energy. Um, and throat chakra stuff so uh this is interesting i i'm because jupiter is going to be in your sign and it does rule sagittarius and you are going to have that energy supporting you from december 20th 2022 to may 15th ish <laughs> 2023 uh i feel like the perseverance that you have shown and displayed over the last year year and a half, two years, is going to be rewarded. All right, this is not a time to give up. This is a time to keep going. And I do feel that you will be rewarded handsomely, like with practical, tangible things that you can say, that's what I built, that's what I did. I hung in there, I did it, here it is. Also, Earth, if we look at Earth element, Jupiter will be going into Taurus in the middle of May. So your second house of money. So I really feel like this, what this is saying to me is that, again, if you've been hanging in there, doing the work, you know, not giving up, being a hard headed ram and going for it, whatever it is you've been going for, you will be rewarded. But uh, some could be some very interesting things going on with throat chakra communication with the turquoise. Um, but also your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. So you've been working very hard to change the direction of your life, to expand the direction of your life in some way. And I feel like that's going to be very positive for you in the year ahead as well. So the Sag, the Sag influence. Okay. All right. So let's see what else we have. Let's continue. Aries. Great start. Also because Saturn has been transiting through Aquarius, your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams. And Saturn often brings rewards after it finishes transiting a certain house. So again, I feel like if you've been hanging in there, working on your dreams, as soon as Saturn gets out of Aquarius in the middle of March, he could bring you some sort of reward again uh, about your hard work and help you manifest an important wish and dream. All right, I want one, please. There we go. All right, Aries. Ooh, look at this. Look at this gorgeous garden here for you. Springtime Aries. Apologies to my down under viewers. All right, today I consciously choose to think loving thoughts, take compassionate actions, and bring forth peaceful energy. Hmm, okay. Thinking some loving thoughts, <laughs> Aries. Compassionate actions. Ariel's doing her nails on the sofa. Is that a compassionate action? Can you hear her right now and what she's doing? <laughs> and bring forth peaceful energy. Okay, that's very good. Um, let's see. We'll see what else develops. But I like that. I feel like this idea with this uh, very much tending your own garden and being happy in 
making some loving creations happen in your world. I love that for you. All right, let's keep going. Remember, everything's a metaphor. Right, let's keep going. All right, Aries. What else do we need to know? Aries. Consciously choosing loving thoughts. Whoa. And being peaceful. I'm not being hyper-caffeinated the way I am right now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I've been drinking some real high test coffee today, but it's darn good. All right. You know, Aries and their coffee. What can we say? All right. Onward and upward. There we go. Number 43. Let go of the past so you can be present and create the future you desire. Yes, this is the future you are creating. Look at this gorgeousness. And again, the perseverance, the onward and upward, you are just, you keep going, Aries, which is fabulous. Letting go of the past, you can be present, create the future you desire. That is happening for you. Let's dive in with the energy to clarify that onward and upward. Beautiful. All right, onward and upward. Four wands, beautiful. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at this. Ooh, getting chills down my legs. Aries. All right, here's your Aries energy. Here's your four of wands, the fool. Um, so your birthday is going to be an important time. Our solar return is, from every sign, our birthday season is very important. But here's the thing. Pay particular attention to what things pop for you kind of unexpectedly or from the universe, because we have the fool here, that kind of just come out of nowhere around your birthday time or even in just in airy season itself because that is often an energetic indicator of an energetic theme for your year ahead so you know i think there's something here so just just kind of pay attention to that what happens for you um you know around your around your birthday particularly um now i will tell you this that aries people who are born between April 8th and, and the 12th, I'll just give it one other day on the other side of the 11th, between the 8th, well, you could maybe say the 7th, the 7th through the 12th, you're going to have Jupiter conjunct your sun in your solar return. This is an enormously beneficial aspect for your year ahead uh, and speaks to this onward, upward, fresh adventures, excitement, expansive energy. Again, we have like this Jupiter influence going on with this card that we were looking at. And look, we have the garden here, the beautiful flowers. Look, all the flowers here. So uh, you're going to be planting very bountiful seeds in the year ahead also. Uh, I love a four of wands. This is April for me, airy season. Doors opening, celebrations, something brand new in your life kicking on in. Uh, especially connected with Jupiter matters because Jupiter will be in Aries. And like I said, for those people, April 7th to the 12th, you're going to have a conjunct your sun, which is the one of the most beautiful aspects you can have. It's just very energizing, very expansive. Like you're feeling very excited about new opportunities. Uh, there is some brand new beginning coming into your life, I think, in April. Uh, could be a travel opportunity that leads to connections with interesting people. There could, of course, be Something connected with your home. Um, I'm feeling like, though, a travel away from home since this came after this. Um, but you could also be expanding your home in some way uh, in April. It's, it's possible. Um, but I feel like this is just an exciting new chapter, new life direction, possibly a trip, feeling just lighter, freer, um, and having something really gorgeous to celebrate for yourself with this energy. So it is crucial. Hello, Miss Ariel. It is crucial to let go of the past. This is four of wands for me is, is energy of a door kicking open in a positive way, not like somebody trying to beat down your door. Okay. But in a positive way, the universe, you know, opens a door for you. So make sure, yes, from now until, you know, the beginning of the year, whatever you really look toward letting go of wrapping up chapters, letting go of the past, working through any excess emotional baggage and letting it go because you need to travel lighter and freer um, next year. And Jupiter's gonna encourage Jupiter's gonna encourage that for you literally, I think, po possibly with some travel and also figuratively. So this is very, very beautiful, beautiful energy. Just this lightness. Just this beautiful lightness. Love this for you. Okay. So I'm feeling like 
there is this bountiful garden that is going to blossom for you from seeds you've planted in the past. Okay, but from those seeds that you've been planting and working hard toward cultivating, there's going to be a lot of new beginnings also. So very nice. Let's see. Let's keep going here now that this thing has come back. All right. Let's see what we got for you. Aries, what do we have? Oh, Aries, choose some love. And look at all these flowers in this one, too. Does the decks fall over here? All right, hold on. All right, hold on. I got to pause. Hold on one moment, please. All right, so I was holding up this card and then all the cards that I'm trying to stack that I've already been working with kind of fell over. All right, we're continuing on here. All right, so we have choose love. Look at this. You always have a choice as to what you should do. Mm, okay. The loving choice. And remember, we had the Ariel's laying all over your cards. We had the card about um, choosing to be peaceful and cultivating your garden, all of that type of thing. Um, wow. You always have a choice as to what you should do. Choose from a loving place. All right, let's, let's clarify that. That's, that's kind of interesting. You could also be saying yes to love in the year ahead. Remember, everything's a metaphor. You could be choosing love in your life, a new love. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a person. It could be a love for a new furry companion. It could be the love for some new activity that you really enjoy. Um, a loving new friendship, whatever. You always have a choice as to what you should do. And kind of stopping and pausing and thinking about it for a minute first, too. That is always helpful for Aries. Okay. All right. Before you just... Just kind of leap. Leap. Sometimes it's just a, a momentary pause. <laughs> uh, here again, the fool. And I shuffled very thoroughly. Okay. And the hermit. All right. So a lot of you are choosing to move out of some sort of hermitage that you've been in, some sort of a situation where you've been squirreled away by yourself. Uh, so, and there's nothing wrong with being squirreled away by yourself. Of course not. But uh, if you have been kind of just burning the midnight oil, maybe focused a lot on work or just doing things alone behind the scenes and you, you really haven't, you know, you really feel like you're ready for a change from that. It served its purpose. Maybe you got something accomplished. But now you're ready. Look, you've got the fool twice in this reading so far. You're ready to step out into the sunshine. You don't want to be tucked away with the hermit. So I think you're going to be choosing love of freedom, expansion, and adventure. And just feeling lighter. Choosing to feel lighter is what I am feeling from this. Now, some of you, that may have something to do with actually, literally, losing weight. And one thing we have to be careful of when Jupiter transits our own sign, but particularly the ascendant, um, you know, so Aries risings, pay attention to this, especially, but any Aries pay attention. Um, when Jupiter, the planet of expansion is in our sign, we can literally expand <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, all those things we just love to eat. They're not off limits anymore. We just indulge, right? That is Jupiter. So you may want to, and, and we have the Virgo energy here, which tends to be more about moderation. And this is your sixth house of, of well-being and, you know, things like that. So you may also want to uh, just keep that in mind that you're not choosing uh, to love yourself through excessive indulgences. They have their place. Indulgences have their place. Sure. Um, but that may be something to look at as well. That may make the loving choice for yourself. OK, but I'm feeling what this is, is choosing adventure, choosing expansion. And, and choosing, and that you have a choice about that. You don't have to stay stuck in hermit mode. All right, you don't. So, and Jupiter's going to really be making you feel that itch to get out and about and be with people again and, and connect and have fun. Um, so this is very, very nice energy here. All right, let's keep going. Aries, Aries, L is on all my stuff. Oh my God. Okay. All right, Aries. <sighs> Onward and upward. I think you're going to have some beautiful, new, lovely path ahead for you. You're going to be feeling the love in 2023. Aries. Okay, that is one. Just making sure. Okay, here we go. Oh my God, is this not gorgeous. After the rain. 
silver lining, relief, hope, mercy, it's over acceptance. So again, the perseverance onward and upward. Look at this. The rain is done in your life, Aries. It's finished. Onward, upward, upward, joyfulness. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. So, so beautiful. Okay. Silver lining. So you'll see if something really went sideways in 2022. <laughs> Not saying a word about that. Okay. But if something really went sideways, there was a silver lining to that. And you will see what that is in 2023. Um, so the sun always comes out after the rain. And look at this gorgeous rainbow here. And look at the sun shining on her face. This is, again, a, an energy that, to me, is very attuned with the fool. I feel like this is your, your major arcana for the year ahead. This fool energy. So you might want to have that on, on your altar or maybe get a notebook that has the fool on the cover or something like that. I feel like this is, this is really speaking to the Aries energy. In 2023 all right let's continue wow so again we had like kind of wrapping up the past with the onward and upward now that card is also saying it's over except it's over see the blessing you'll be seeing the blessing and why something went sideways so don't dwell it's time to embrace the new and feel the sun on your face the fool and after the rain hold your head up high all right aries what else do we have here let's see Gorgeous. Look at this. We have Lotus Jewel. Underneath your feathered exterior lies a radiant diamond glimmering with truth, beauty, and wisdom. I'm getting chills down my legs. And of course, diamond is the Aries birthstone. How appropriate is that? Underneath your feathered exterior lies a radiant diamond. You are a radiant diamond glimmering with truth, beauty, and wisdom. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> People aren't always ready for the Aries truth to be popping out, but you know, we have good intentions, but speak with love and be peaceful. If you're communicating your truth, especially to somebody close to you that you care about, or they ask you for advice or something like that, just a little, that's what I'm feeling with this energy Aries. But notice too, the hummingbird is rising up from the lotus flower and the lotus flower grows in mud, which, you know, could be a metaphor for difficult, sticky situations. So again, onward and upward. Notice that the hummingbirds flying up out of the situation. Again, that could have gone sideways, um, but you are blossoming from something that didn't work out in 2022 is what I am feeling. Like it's not going to matter. Like you, you may have, it may have been a little bit like, eh, you know, why didn't that happen for me? Um, but you're going to have something so much better come in for you. All right. Wow. Onward and upward. Let's keep going. Aries. Aries. Radiant Diamond Aries. Here we go. Ooh, we have some temptation. What are you doing there in your red outfit? The desire. Oh, and we have the keyword pitfall. All right, so this is some good, good advice here. Let's see what we have. The desire for excessive gain and, and accumulation leads to misfortune. The greatest contentment is in knowing when you have had enough. Ah, interesting. And all temptation is banished. So again, with Jupiter through your sign, this excess is important to keep a check on, keep a lid on. Escape from the trap that imprisons you. Refuse to be a victim. Be free. Okay. Oh, look, and we have a little aerial cat that's right here in the corner of this card. All right. So let me read that one more time because it's kind of deep, Aries. The desire for excessive gain and accumulation leads to misfortune. So that may be something to keep an eye on also when Jupiter is going through Taurus mid-May until the end of 2023 because that's your second house of money. So, you know, money isn't everything. Yes, money is important, of course. But what it says here, excessive gain and accumulation. Like that's the be all end all of life. And, you know, just keep an eye on that, especially in the time frame I recommended. Or I, you know, said the greatest contentment is in knowing when you have had enough. Again, Jupiter transiting through your own sign can make you feel like you're unstoppable, which is, you know, pretty true for Aries. But, <laughs> but you know, you do need to know when you have had enough. And Jupiter can make us feel like 
we just need everything, all of it, all the time. Okay, escape from the trap that imprisons you. I'm getting kind of also devil Capricorn vibes from this, this energy. Uh, refuse to be a victim, be free. Let's clarify that real fast here for you. So, and Capricorn's your 10th house. And that's, I'm getting that vibe from this energy as well. Um, Pluto has just, will be getting out of that 10th house of career for you as of mid-March. And of course he will be retrograding back into it. But, uh, so you may have learned some interesting lessons about, um, you know, what really is important to you in terms of your career, that maybe it's not all about work, that there needs to be a balance between accumulation and status Capricorn and also your personal life and personal relationships. Okay. So let's see what we need to know about this energy for you. Okay. So we have the Taurus energy with the Empress showing up. Oh, wow. And the queen of Pentacles. Wow. Okay. This is what I feel. So this is big money energy right here. So I think that you have the enormous potential to manifest some serious money for yourself in the year ahead. Um, but what I would say is that as long as that, that energy is coming from, um, coming from really nurturing your creativity, nurturing your passion, the Empress for creation, rather than simply nurturing your passion for accumulation. It's not just about accumulating money. Money in the pursuit of money is not what we're talking about here. That's what will get you in trouble. But if you pursue solid finances and prosperity for yourself from a place of really inspired creativity, this empress, this, this loving energy, the empress is very loving, this loving, nurturing, creative, like I'm just like in nature doing my thing thing and also notice again all the garden imagery we have this has been a theme through this reading thus far if you are creating that prosperity from your inner garden then it's okay then you're not going to be tempted into into this this uh this pitfall that this card is talking about so that's the key you you can manifest this for yourself look at this and if you're wanting to improve your finances that's also what this is saying to me when you chase money for money's sake, it tends to just keep running away. But if you chase creativity, if you chase nurturing, if you chase the, the love of, you know, what you can create for yourself, no matter what you do in the world, that's how you manifest the money. And I say that a lot on this channel, like, you know, money loves joy. Joy creates prosperity. So that's what I'm feeling from this, this energy. All right. Be free. Be free and creativity, creative energy and focusing on that frees you from that, I think, kind of destructive hamster wheel thinking of I got to make more, I got to make more, I got to la, 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 and comparison and things like that. So focus on your own thing. Like that's the thing too with the Queen of Pentacles, like the pentacle falls in her lap. Um, she's not looking around at anybody else what they're doing. Right. So again, same thing, the Empress, like she's focusing on what she can grow in her own garden. That's the key for you, Aries. Don't worry about other people's shenanigans, what they have, what you have, etc. It doesn't matter. All right, let's keep going. All right, Aries. I can't pull the other cards to reference them because Ariel's laying all over them. All right, let's keep going, Aries. All right, what do we have here? The independent, all right, that's you, number 37. Affirmation, I am aware of my inner dialogue and direct it by positive imagery. Oh, gorgeous, look at this. What do we have going on in this card? We have the butterfly wings, again, lots of gardening things. We have the spider totem down here, that may be an important animal totem for you. I will be pulling an animal totem card in a few moments, but. Spider's a lot about writing and creativity also. So writing down in a manifestation journal what you want to create uh, in your year ahead might be very uh, helpful for you. But look at, again, this independence, this inner garden. I am aware of my inner dialogue. How do you become aware of your inner dialogue? A lot of us do it through writing, keeping a journal. 
and direct it by positive imagery. Yes. So just don't let your inner dialogue run riot and tell you things that, you know, you don't need to be hearing. Like direct your inner dialogue and, you know, by positive imagery, particularly when you journal, like don't just say, I want this, you know, I, I want to manifest, blah, blah, blah. No, direct the imagery, create the story whoops, of the thing that you want to manifest. That's imagery. Imagery is story. Imagery is, um, you know, seeing yourself literally having the thing, doing the thing that you want. So write about that in your journal. That's a way of directing your inner dialogue. All right, let's keep going. Aries. Let's see. I may need to pause and take a sip of my coffee. Okay. Aries. Aries. Ooh. Oh, look at this. There's your diamond. There's your diamond. Merkaba activation, transcendence, ascension, ascension. You are rising up. We just had onward and upward, which I think Ariel is laying on somewhere over here. Okay, wait. We just had the diamond energy. So, wow. Okay. You are rising up. This is the thing. This is a whole new adventure for you, whole new fresh energy. You're going to be feeling this sense of, like I said, freedom, uplift, gorgeous. This is this is really affirming what we were looking at. All right, let's keep going. I love when the energies affirm when they dovetail like this. Okay, Aries, what else do they need to know? 2023, Aries. Let's see what we got. Simplify your life, Aries. Interesting. Eliminate clutter from your home and work life to balance the flow of activities. I think this is, an, this is very important because we had the Fool card twice show up. And as I said, the Fool travels lightly. So this may be because some of you may be moving home with that Fool card and the Four of Wands. It's possible. And you're not going to want to cart around a bunch of junk you don't need anymore. Um, so... That may be possible for some of you. Um, but I like this balance the flow of activities here that's going on in this card. So I feel like there's maybe some, some stuff in your in your environment that's left over from past pursuits, like past hobbies, like things you may have did done before uh, that they're not you anymore or clothing that, again, maybe some certain activities, things you were involved in. Uh, that you don't you don't do that anymore. You don't need that stuff because you're going in a different direction. So I feel like it's something to do with that actually for probably a lot of you. But this idea of feeling free, not being burdened, overwhelmed, weighed down by stuff because you are going to be feeling this sense of expansion. Um, and when your environment doesn't mirror how you're feeling inside, we have that cognitive dissonance. So I think that that's, that's an important, if that really applies to you, um, that's a very important thing for you to get underway. Now, Mercury will be retrograde in Capricorn um, the basically the first three weeks of the year in January. So that is a great time using the Mercury retrograde energy to clear out stuff, right? That's a good use of Mercury retrograde energy. All right, let's see what else. Whoops, one, please. What else is going on? Aries, oh, God, you are a goddess of dreams. Number 25, vision, intuition, and receptivity. Okay, remember, everything's a metaphor. I, I really feel like this a gorgeous dream is going to come true for you in 2023. Let's see. But your vision and your intuition are going to be on point Aries um, and being really receptive to that energy. Your dream life may be very active also in the year ahead but let's see i want to clarify that one goddess of dreams vision intuition receptivity what's going on aries aries seven of coins and the star okay so again something that maybe has reached only a certain level in your life seven of pentacles something you thought you know, mm, should I give up on this? I don't know. Maybe. Um, I don't know what to do. I got to think about this. Do I want to keep tending my garden? Again, the garden metaphor. Do I want to keep tending my garden, watering this particular plant? Should I go in a new direction? 
And you've got the star card, which is Aquarius, your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams. Saturn's just getting out of that mid-March. Pluto's going into that mid-March, into that house, the 11th house. Um, so again, I strongly feel that there is likely to be some beautiful dream that manifests for you. And it could have something to do with an Aquarian. It could have something to do with um, some sort of healing in your life healing situation, healing something with an Aquarian, um, having a dream of healing and well-being manifest in your life. But also, for me, the star card is a lot about this North Star, what you're headed to, the, some sort of new chapter, new direction you're going in. The star card is also a card of being well-known for whatever you're good at. So, if you've been kind of thinking, well, the results have not been coming in for me. Like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this particular thing. This energy is saying to me, if your heart's still really into it, if you really feel it's a path that's aligned for you, persevere, right? That's the energy we had. Of course, I can't get the card now. Hold on. Thank you, Ariel. She's mad. She's mad. I'm trying to get the card. All right. This is what we have. The perseverance. So if this, if you really feel it's this seven of pentacles in assessment time, if you really feel that, you know, I still want to invest in this dream, then it's time to persevere. It's not time to give up. The rewards are about to come in. They may come in. They may start coming in in Aquarius season. That's very possible uh, for you. But this is not a time to give up. This is a time to just, you know, dig deeper. Now, some of you, you may decide with this assessment, you know what? My heart's not into it. Maybe I want to plant seeds in a whole new direction, which was supported also by our reading with the fool twice. And like I said, seeds of the old coming to fruition, which can be for some of you. Others is the idea that we have seeds from the old coming to fruition, but we're also planting new seeds for a whole new situation. So I feel like this can also be the seeds from the past are going to bear fruit. You just have to hang in there a little longer. Others of you, May, ch may change and go in a whole new direction because you may decide, you know what, I'm kind of over this. So it's just going to depend. But I think that this is really, really positive, no matter which kind of situation you're in um, with this energy. So very, very nice. But persevere. No time to give up with any of this stuff. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Aries. I, still, I just still didn't pause and get a sip of my coffee. I think I need to do that. All right, let's do this deck and then I'm going to pause and get a sip of my coffee. Okay. Look, the visionary. We just had the vision. Wow, and these two girls look alike. Asterope, A-S-T-E-R-O-P-E, -E, the visionary, number 34, awake. With an intuitive perspective, I see the bigger picture. Oh my gosh, look at this. So I'm going to go with the, the cards we just pulled also. Like the bigger picture, that's this, this destiny. Okay, the star. So like I said, you may be moving from something getting ready to wrap up like you're evaluating. Because in fact, yes, you're having this vision for your future that is bigger. That's going in a different direction. Um, that's leading you on to something where maybe you could take a starring role or be of higher visibility or, or get more recognition for what you're doing. Okay, so very, very positive, positive energies here. But it's an intuitive perspective. And this star card is also a lot associated with, um, with spirit guides. Okay, with uh, cosmic help from, you know, other realms, perhaps. Um, also, because in the star card, this lady is naked. Um, this, this can be about really, allow, really allowing yourself to be vulnerable uh, in a positive sense to, you know, I feel, I'm feeling like, I hope I can, I'm going to explain this correctly. It's sometimes hard to translate into just this intuitive feeling into English, right? into words. But it's like allowing your tender hearted, airy self, the one that lives deep inside of you, not the hard headed ram that everybody sees, but the little, the little tender Aries, right? The Aries baby, the baby of springtime. 
that lives inside of you, that little naked baby, when coming to the world, we're all naked, right? The little naked baby inside of you that has some really tender-hearted dreams for yourself. And allowing yourself to have that vision, allowing your intuition to feed into it, feel that beautiful little baby energy, and have that vision for yourself for some sort of new future. It's something deeply personal, maybe. Again, you kind of almost have hidden it away from even yourself. There's something here about being vulnerable and naked to yourself, to that little baby inside of you in your heart, and having some sort of perhaps new dream be born from that energy. So, yeah, allowing yourself to feel that, see that, be that energy and go on some sort of new destiny. And that's also the fool card that we've had, that sense of hopeful new beginnings. It's very Aries, but there's also, like I said, from that star, I just keep feeling like it's it's something very precious within you that you would like to have born into the world. And uh, you may you may feel like the time is right, opening yourself up to the vision of that in your life for your future. All right, Aries, I took another sip of my lovely coffee. Let's keep going. Wow, very interesting energies. All right, Aries, what else do we have here? Ooh, look at this. The moment I embrace my peace within and surrender the outcome is the moment that the universe can truly get to work. Oh, yeah. Okay, so interesting. We're having energies about peacefulness here. If I can get my other one, I can't get it. Ariel's laying all over it. Yeah, you hear her? She won't move. Okay, so we had that, we had that before um, about being peace, peaceful and calm and compassionate. So we're having it coming out again. Uh, embracing the peace within and surrender the outcome. Yeah, wow. And that is the moment the universe can truly get to work. All right, let's keep going. You don't have to force anything. Like I was saying before, uh, engage with that Empress energy. And the Empress looks very peaceful sitting there in her garden in that tarot card. So, all right, let's keep going. Aries, pure intention. Ooh. This is so like what I was trying to explain with my little baby metaphor that I was just discussing. The fairy of manifestation, airy fairy, the, the fairy of manifestation will help you to use your wishes wisely. Manifest your heart's desire with pure intention and for the highest good of all, but mostly the highest good also of yourself, of that little baby Aries that lives deep inside you. This exactly fits what I was just saying. Okay, wow. Use your wishes wisely. Yes, especially with Jupiter going through your sign, Aries, right? Remember, we're talking about all this excess kind of stuff. Like, don't let yourself get too carried away. Really use your wishes and that Jupiter energy wisely. Pure intention. Gorgeous. All right, let's keep going. That is so, like, this is so, like, the little baby Aries energy. Wow. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Let's pull an animal totem card for you. Aries, Aries, Aries. One more. All right, there we go. The Cardinal. Isn't that perfect for you? The red bird, right? The polarities of your spiritual pursuits and physical pleasures are out of balance. Wow, here's another warning about this. And we just had this from our girl in the red dress. All right, wow. So do whatever is necessary to bring them back into equilibrium. Let's discuss this again. Let me read it again. The polarities of your spiritual pursuits and physical pleasures are out of balance. So do whatever is necessary to bring them back to equilibrium. That is exactly what she was talking about over here. Not the desire for excessive gain and accumulation leads to misfortune. So again, Right? The greatest contentment is in knowing when you have had enough. So this is the thing, the balance between these two things. Corroborating messages coming out, same colors. I mean, this is incredible. So this is a very, very important message, Aries. All right? So not to just pursue, like we were talking about 
you know, money, pursuit of money for money's sake. No, start with what's making you feel good and making you feel creative, the Empress energy, and then the Queen of Pentacles will manifest for you. But having that balance, so, so important. This is such, such an interesting message for Aries. And it really corroborates with Jupiter going through your sign and then through your second house of money. All right, let's keep going. Aries, Aries, Aries. Oh, that flipped over. So that's the one. Okay. Oh, we have two. You get a bonus. Okay. Don't tell the other signs. All right. We have spiritual growth. Number 67. You are currently experiencing a lesson required for your spiritual evolution. All right. I really feel that has something to do with these energies that we were just looking at. The spiritual growth lesson is something about, again, the balance between the pursuit of financial gain, money, that type of thing, and also, you know, your creative life, your spiritual life, your personal life. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have money and be spiritual. Of course you can be. That's, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, and what both of these energies are saying, is it's about the balance. Okay? And... The lesson may be that we're talking about here is the lesson of balance. Because there can be, there can be with Jupiter going through your sign, a lot of temptation as we've already discussed. All right, now number 26, gorgeous rejoicing. You have learned how to make the most out of life. Yes. Now this is interesting because we had that four of wands before and that is a celebration energy. So there is something you are going to be celebrating in the year ahead. Let's, let's clarify that one. Let's see when I'm going to find out. Something else about that for you. You have learned how to make the most out of life. Yes, and of course, Jupiter is making you feel optimistic as it transits through. Okay, let's find out. Aries, rejoicing Aries. Oh, gorgeous. Six of Cups and the Four of Cups. All right. So... You may indeed be rejoicing about some new friendship in your life, possibly a soulmate, a new soulmate arriving, some sort of very heartfelt, loving, uh, kind, sensitive connection. Lots of joy. Six of Cups is a very joyful energy. It's innocent. It's sweet. It's um, playful. Very nice energy. So I feel like some of you, there may be something like that. This is also a children card. So if you have children, there may be something that's particularly uh, celebratory going on with them. Maybe they're graduating. Maybe they have a special birthday coming up. It could be something like that. Uh, we have the Four of Cups here, which uh, think of Aries with the red shirt on here. And the universe bringing something out of left field as an opportunity. So I think you may also be rejoicing in something, again, that didn't work out but is coming back or coming in a different form, something better, as we've been saying, some new better opportunity. Don't be stubborn sitting there like, oh, nothing's ever going to happen. And then you miss it when it comes in. So, you know, <laughs> there's something very nice here with this energy Aries, but this is from the universe and it kind of comes when you may least expect it. But don't be dwelling on the past because that can also be with this. And we got that message also in the other onward and upward energy um, because something better is going to come in. But if you're dwelling on and looking backward, you're not going to see what's coming toward you in the present moment. So that is something to keep an eye on. All right, let's keep going. The cat here. All right. <clears throat> Numerology deck. Aries. 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 Ooh, oh, gorgeous. Follow your dreams. Hello. Follow your dreams. <laughs> Number 85. So this <laughs> is very corroborating of all the things that we have just been looking at. All right. The vision, that little Aries baby inside. What do they really want? You know, little inner child Aries the vulnerable Aries that maybe hasn't shared that particular dream with the world. It's time to follow that dream and see where that star card, that North node of destiny type energy leads you, leads you, follow it. Let's see where it goes. 
All right, wow. Follow your dreams, Aries. Very important. Let's keep going. We have a color. Ooh. Express your true feelings. Okay, well, yeah. I feel, again, this could be with somebody close to you. I feel like it's your true feelings to yourself about really what you really want to go for in your life. This big, bold, new dream, new adventure, especially with the Fool card that we've been, we've been discussing. Um, and with that star, that feeling vulnerable, you know, and coming up with some sort of new direction to head in your life. So express your true feelings to yourself. Um, the dreams that you are following may involve expression, self-expression in some way. So maybe writing, maybe music, maybe personal performance, dance, film. You know, there could be something like that um, going on as well for you. Okay, let's keep going. Aries. We have here. Oh, wow. Look at this. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Capricorn. All right. So the full moon in Capricorn happens in cancer season. So I don't have that date at my fingertips. You'll have to look it up. You can Google that. Um, so, I mean, I do feel like you are undergoing a major, major turning point, as we know, onward and upward. So there may be something that wraps up at Capricorn, at that Capricorn full moon. Um, let's see if we can get a hint on that. I don't feel necessarily it's a tough cycle of something connected here in 2022, but I mean, it could be. Let's see what we need to know. Now, Capricorn is your 10th house of career, so maybe it's something to do with that, but doesn't necessarily have to be. Let's see, what do we have? All right, we have an Eight of Cups. Oh, and we got the, the wheel. I feel I need one more. It's kind of inconclusive. Okay, two of cups. All right. So, all right. If you have left behind some sort of relationship, I'm going to read it from relationship perspective because I have a two of cups over here, okay? If you have left, left behind some relationship in 2022, uh, maybe in August, but doesn't have to be, um, uh, the end of that emotional healing, that cycle of, you know, whenever you left it behind, the universe is likely bringing you somebody new, I would say in July. Okay. With this, with this Jupiter energy, it'll be, this is our Jupiter energy. It will be in Taurus at that time. So I think this new person that is likely to come in, uh, the end of this tough, you know, season or cycle in your love life, this new person that's going to come in is much more aligned for you emotionally. And because Jupiter will be in your second house of values, this person is going to value you and what you bring to the table way more than the previous person did. And I love this. There's the healing symbol here. This, these two people really see eye to eye. It's a much more aligned energy for you. It's going to make you feel good. Maybe the other relationship brought you down or it just was, you know, not good in some way. Um, this is going to be much, much better for you, Aries. So, um, but it's about the divine timing. Like you can't force it here <laughs> with the wheel. Um, so now for others of you, it could be something where you had to walk away emotionally from a family member or a friendship or something like that. It is possible that there could be a healing. There could be some sort of healing with that with that situation and there's maybe a reconnection or a rapprochement, you know, but I feel like that's more with if it's a family situation or a friend or something like that, not romantically. I don't think there's going to be a romantic reunion. Um, I feel like there's going to be a romantic beginning for you also based on the other cards. But for some of you, it might be that Jupiter brings somebody back to apologize uh, to, you know, extend the cup of friendship and say, Aries, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I, I was really messed up. I don't know what happened. <laughs> like, you know, like, this is how I was acting. So, I mean, that's possible also. But I'm feeling it's much more, this is much more for my, 
romantically inclined people out there, my single people who are looking for a relationship. But let's keep going. Okay. Aries. What do we got here? Ooh, look at this gorgeousness. I am patient knowing that whatever is of the highest good is coming to me. And look at this. Doesn't this look like our two of cups that we just had? So if you are in pursuit of some sort of new relationship, just be patient. I know that's a tough thing to ask of an Aries. I get it. All right. But um, whatever is of the highest good is coming to you. Again, there's going to be a relationship that is going to be of value because of Jupiter will be in that second house. If the timing is for the summer of next year for this to come in, which it may be, it's going to be it's going to be really enhancing the value of your life, the quality of your life. This person, because Jupiter will be in Taurus, this is somebody who's going to want to stay. They're not some like fly by night, flippity gibbet, as I like to call Like They're not hit it, quit it out of there. Like, no, this is somebody who wants to grow your garden with you, Aries. Look at the flower here. All right. It's all coming together in this reading, Aries. All right, let's keep going. But also, this is a good reminder. We had, we had perseverance before, and now we're also getting patience. So... This is part of your spiritual growth, as we were just discussing spiritual growth with this other card. Spiritual growth in 2023. All right. Aries. Ooh. All right. I feel like this top one because it's like popping. All right. Oh, 11th house. Friends. Isn't this interesting? Number 35. And we have Pluto going into your 11th house of friends as of the middle of March. So Pluto is going to be really transforming your networks, your connections, your friendships. Pluto is also the house of gains. Pluto is a lot about, um, you know, massive transformation on a very deep level. So all of this metamorphosis that you have been undergoing, um, you're going to see that now your connections are going to start shifting and changing because of the way you have been changing and growing and the same old same old is not going to cut it anymore you want connections and friendships of real substance that's the pluto so don't be surprised especially in my aries rising people if with pluto going into the 11th house you start having transitions with your friendships this is just a natural part of life it doesn't mean anybody's going to be you know bad or mean or whatever it just could be things fall away naturally um so that's that's very interesting um, Pluto, I mean, excuse me, 11th house is also our house of gains. So Pluto could bring you some sort of important gain from an inheritance, um, other people's resources, because Pluto rules your eighth house of sex, death, taxes, other people's resources, that type of thing. So there could also be something going on in that area of your life in 2023, um, as well aries okay but your friendships are going to start changing in 2023 based on also i think shifts in your values that you have undergone but also that you will be undergoing because you're going to be following following different dreams a different path you're going to be onward upward up leveling and as you up level and as you rise like that little hummingbird out of that lotus flower like again like you're a different person. Like some of the energy from other friendships is just not going to be aligned for you anymore. So they will naturally fall away. All right. Let's see. Just a part of life. Life cycles. Oh, look what you got. You got the cat. You got some good luck. Yes, Aries. Let's see what we need to know about that for you. Good luck. When Jupiter is transiting Aries. What do we need to know about this good luck for Aries? Aries people. All right, we got a three of swords. Don't worry. And we have a ten of wands. All right, well, let's keep going. And we have an ace of swords. I, I feel like two more. Oh, six of wands and the seven of wands. Okay, I like this. This is good. All right. So we have victory and success here. Two victory and success cards. Um, 
through your independence of thought and action. So the good luck is going to come through you cutting away your past. This has been a theme, right? Mentally, mentally letting go of your past. Ace of Swords. Um, letting go of situations that have hurt you, people that have hurt you, that you don't need in your life. Uh, Ten of Wands, burdens, uh, problematic situations, just heavy energy, uh, you know, carrying too many things on your shoulders. This is the opposite. This is the antithesis of the Fool card. So by you cutting yourself loose from these types of energies and situations, you're going to bring good luck to yourself. So this is likely some sort of um, visibility. We had the star card before destiny, new direction, possible fame, people, rec people recognizing you. This is also that same type of energy. Um, but this is also about being a leader, taking, you know, a leadership role in the world, in your life, et cetera, just doing things your way, seven of wands. So you're going to bring good luck to yourself by cutting less than situations out of your life and by proceeding triumphantly <laughs> with your head held high. Like feeling good about yourself, radiating all of that beautiful Aries energy out into the world. That is how the good luck will come. The good luck may come uh, with some sort of paperwork contract. There could, you could be signing, uh, you know, some sort of very important paper. It's going to depend on your personal situation in the year ahead. This may be something to do with a job, but it could also be something else. Uh, it may be possibly happening in air sign season, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, but also I'm feeling very possible around your birthday with the six of wands showing up. So saying yes to some sort of new opportunity that is going to bring greater visibility uh, to your life is what's going to bring you good luck. All right. It's like a lucky break will happen for you. That's what I feel from these energies. But the thing is, is to use that Ace of Swords. Remember, we're always talking about using energy on this channel. Uh, you can choose to stay stuck in this. You can choose to keep settling for less than situations. But it's time to take that sword up and set yourself free from this. All right, so especially if something went sideways, as I was saying, in 2022, uh, try not to dwell on it anymore. Your future is here in 2023. It's like right here, all this gorgeous energy that we have had. So leave the past in the past. Fresh mindset, fresh energy. Um, get your Aries mojo back. That's also the six of wands I am feeling. Like this just, again, this like very empowered, like leadership energy. That is Aries. Uh, and whatever it is you're doing in your life, really embodying that, <laughs> embodying that energy. That'll bring you lots of good luck. Okay. So let's see what else we need to know. Aries. All right. I'm feeling this one stuck in my hand. Okay. Look, beautiful rainbow. You are the blessing. You are. You are a blessed soul and a blessing to this world and others. In giving, you also receive, for life is an ebb and flow of love and blessings. We are all of a single essence and one in spirit. To give is to bless both yourself and others. Wow. And this is, again, with this yellow, like that fool, the fool energy. Aries, very exciting year ahead for you. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're looking forward to manifesting in 2023. I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing year ahead. Take care and I will see you again soon. Stella Wild signing out.